going on guys today we're going to discuss a very important concept the concept is to pimp or be pimped this is a concept that many many americans have realized that they've been participating in the pimp or pe pimp paradigm and they were in them sitting in the room and they realized that one person was the pimp and they realized the other person was the hoe and they looked in the mirror and saw that they were the hoe. During this pandemic, many Americans have reached a level of disenfr disenfranchisement, um, disenchantment, disenchantment. They reached this level of disenchantment because they were home and they realized that the companies that they were working for were pimping them. And they didn't like being pimped. They didn't like being on that whole stroll. But here's the thing. There is no middle ground to the pimp or be pimped paradigm. Either you're going to be pimping or you will be pimped. There's no middle ground. And I'm going to tell you why there's no middle ground because of the way that we were institutionalized as Americans and indoctrinated to seek permission and validation. This is a big, 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 big thing. Huge, huge thing. So one of the things that we're going to discuss is the validation syndrome. Now what is validation? Let's take what happened to me in October, and this is going to be really, really deep. Um, I have reached a point from being in sales and dealing with copious amounts of rejection to the point that rejection and failure doesn't do anything to me. I was able to come here on YouTube and discuss, discuss my failures in the car rental business because I don't have that bone where I need for you to like me. That's not a currency for me. So I can come here on YouTube and be 100% honest with you. And I noticed that once I started making that content about how bad the car rental business was, I started to see more videos about that because one of the things that I had to understand and really appreciate is that many YouTubers are seeking validation. And I actually was looking at this from the wrong aspect. They were seeking validation. That's why you see so much feel good content on YouTube because these people are just seeking validation because they were institutionalized they were indoctrinated in the American system. So they're just doing what comes natural. And I misconstrued that as they were, well, some of them are lying to you. Some of them are lying to you. But I don't have that validation bone. I don't need the approval. And you know, once again, shout out to the people who leave the well-constructed comments. I really appreciate you guys. And you know, I like that when someone watches the video and leave a well-constructed comment, I like that. I'm not gonna lie, I like that. But I don't operate on currency. And this is why I love Western Japanese philosophy. You don't go too high, you don't go too little, you just kinda hang out in the middle. So when you get validation, you don't get high off your own supply because that validation that came so easily can be withdrawn easily. So you, you kind of walk this middle ground. And that's typically where I'm at because one of the things that happens in the pimped or be pimped paradigm. All right, so this is to welcome you guys to the Glendon Cameron School, the ultimate source for personal finance and business development and startups. So what we're starting with in the first mode is, let's go here. Home economics. Home economics is the foundational educational course of extreme money management. So you can go ahead and get in there and we've got a lot of things coming. And this Sunday at 4 p.m. March 27th, we have our second live webinar. So go ahead, sign up today. The link is below because this is to prep you to be an entrepreneur in the future because one of the biggest issues that we have is people will make money 
and they'll get locked into a cycle. So there's a lot here that's gonna be here and it is my goal to get this finished before April. So go below, sign up for Home Economics. It is one of the most important money management courses you will ever take in your life. Is you have been institutionalized to be pimped. You have been programmed from birth to be pimped. And it's more prevalent in women than men. I'm about to say something that's very dark. It's gonna be when many women are raped, and let's identify rape, when someone just does something against this woman's will, most of women just comply. They just lay there, they take it, they go through it. Most women, there are some women who fight back, but the average woman who's raped just goes along with it because she has been conditioned to be used and abused by the society. And many women after rape, they ponder and question what did they do to deserve that? Go ahead and Google it. It's, it's fascinating to look at what happens because for me, when someone just goes ahead and takes a woman sexually against her will, that's an abomination in society. But once again, look at the conditioning of women. Women have been conditioned to be pleasers. Women have been conditioned to be um, accepting and accommodating. So the pimping paradigm is more prevalent in women. And I will say the number of men who are entering the pimping paradigm are growing because a lot of men are not masculine. So masculinity is one thing, they used to call it rugged individualism will keep you from being pimped. Like the guy who goes out in the forest, builds a cabin, lives off the land, fishes it, shoots deer, and cures his own meat. This, this guy is very hard to pimp because he's a rough and rugged individualist. But let's talk about what has happened during the pandemic. Americans reached a level of disenchantment and they realized, hey, my job is pimping me. And they realized that. But I have a question for you. You've come to the realization that you're participating in a pimped or be pimped paradigm. You're sitting in a room and you realize that one person in the room is the pimp and you realize that one person in the room is the whore. And you look in the mirror and you see that you're on the whole stroke. The whole stroke. Question, what are you going to do about it? Now, here's the thing. Long, long time ago, I used to be just like you guys. I used to be an average, hardworking man, worked a job, and I was very much part of the pimp or be pimp paradigm. Then one night I was at work and I pulled up the wrong report and I saw that at the end of my shift I had did $32,000 worth of work. And I started in my mind, I was like, forget paying me 20 bucks an hour, pay me you know, with shift diff, it was almost 20 bucks an hour. Pay me a percentage, pay me a percentage. And um, I became very disenchanted. And this is before my tumble into homelessness where my income actually went way lower. It went way lower. And I began to understand the relationship because see, I knew at that moment I ran that report, I was being pimped. I knew, but I had not a clue to what I could do to change that situation because I was still in the indoctrination phase. Like many of you, you're still in the indoctrination phase. And one of the things that you have to understand, and I ask you this question in all seriousness, yes, you're being pimped. If you feel that your company is getting over on you, they pay you a hundred thousand. They're going to be making a hundred to 150 minimum, 150. They might even be making 300,000 off the work you'd be doing. There are some people who are creating products and patents for their companies that are going to make billions and they're only making six figures, you know, unless they have an agreement where they get more of the revenue share. So I ask you this question because it's one thing to realize that something is happening. 
it's another thing to actually do something about it. It's completely different. The same energy that it takes for you to realize that something's happening is different energy than it takes to solve that problem. So having an understanding of the situation, it's like being in the middle of the ocean on a sinking ship. You understand and you know that the ship is sinking, but you're in the middle of the ocean. What can you do about it? And that's kind of where a lot of people are. They're on this ship in the middle of the ocean and the ship is sinking and they have not a plan. They've not prepared. So I'm going to tell you one of the things you need to do. And this is the transformation in the process I went through to join the dark side, to get into the pimping side of life. Because once again, and I'm going to give you some examples of why you will pimp or be pimped. And there is absolutely no middle ground. First of all, for you to join the dark fraternity of pimps, you must take full accountability of yourself, which is really hard, which is really hard. I actually fell out of the matrix into homelessness and I had to rework, rewire and rebuild myself. And one of the things that happened is during that period, I very much used to be quite conscious and very much in validation and approval seeking. Like I would meet people that I didn't even know and I would want them to like me. This is a natural part of humanity. You want people to like you, to be nice to you, to be good to you. Do you, we seek that validation. This is part of the indoctrination process. Like Miss Nichols, can I go to the bathroom? We're constantly programmed, institutionalized and indoctrinated to be seeking permission and validation. You cannot become part of the pimping fraternity if you're seeking approval and validation. You cannot, you cannot. Uh, one of the things that happened to me as I went through it, because let's talk about the October incident me putting up that video about R. Kelly and said I could have been a predator. That's not the first time that I went through that, where literally the internet was dragging me on TikTok and Twitter and people had me on podcast. This is not the first, nor the second, or the third, or the fourth time that I've went through something like that. And the first time, I'm gonna be transparent and honest, it got to me. I actually thought about giving up YouTube. It was that bad. And then I took out the, the Ben Franklin method. If you don't know what the Ben Franklin method is, you draw a T-bar graph and you put pros and cons on it. And I was writing pros. I'm making money. I'm helping people, blah, blah, blah. Cons, haters. So the Ben Franklin method saved me from quitting YouTube. That's, it, it got to me. It really got to me. Because literally every day I would wake up and these people would be talking about me. They'd be dragging me. Uh, one group of folks literally had a three hour hangout about me because I had the audacity to charge for my wisdom, insight and knowledge. So that first one, and honestly, I'm glad it helped me because the first one helped me deal with the second one, because the first thing I did everything wrong. Number one, I did a whole bunch of response or diss videos. They would make a video about me. Then I would make a video about that creator and I would talk all kinds of smack and some bad things happened. One of the things I did is I lost subscribers. I lost a lot of viewers who did not come to see me dissing and going back and forth and just, it, it, it got stupid. It got real stupid. It was about a year of my life that I lost because every time they make a video, I would like make a response video. I would make a diss video. And the second time it happened, I did similar things, but not as much. And the third time it happened, I actually didn't, I, I just ignored it and I kept doing my thing. And that showed me the best outcome because the first time and the second time I lost subscribers, I lost money, I lost sleep. And I was like, okay, next time this happened, I'm just gonna keep doing my thing and I'm gonna ignore it. And that's what I did the fourth time and that's what I did the fifth time and that's what I did with October, the October incident. 
I did not even get into it. And I had people reaching out to me. I remember someone who had a channel with 3,200 subscribers. My, the video about me was their best performing video on their channel and they wanted me to come on the channel and they wanted to discuss it. And I was like, after the lead attorney, I was like, I am not going on any more channels because all they want to do is just beat up on you. They don't want to have a discussion. Uh, shout out to Alan Roger Curry, who actually did a video defending me because everyone of higher intellect didn't, came away with different opinions and considerations from that video versus the low intellect. So once again, this is very important with the pimping paradigm. Let's take wrestling, which is fake. When I was a kid growing up, there used to be some shows on Saturday. Carol Burnett, Lawrence Welk, Hee Haw, and wrestling. And whenever they would pan out Ricky the Steamboat Dragon and they would pan out into the audience, who did you see? You saw Middle America. You saw hillbillies. You saw the country folk, right? And this is very important in the pimping and pimping para the pimp paradigm because one of the things that the people who are on the pimping side of the quadrant understand is that the average person seeks comfort, relaxation, pleasure, and entertainment. See, to get to the pimping fraternity, you have to number one, take responsibility of your life. And number two, you have to work. And this is a big, big issue for a lot of people, that working part of the equation. How many people have you seen who had a hobby that was extremely pleasurable and then they would like turn it into a business and once they had to be responsible and then once they had to start doing work, it, it ceased to be fun because once again, these folks have been programmed for entertainment, comfort, validation seeking and permission seeking. So they don't know how to operate outside of that arena because one of the things that you have to do to get to the pimping side of the quadrant is to work without external validation, without external appreciation. Essentially, I want you to think of yourself of going in an underground bunker. You're in the middle, your bunker's in the middle of the woods. You have to hike to get to your bunker. Then you go in your bunker and you shut the door and you put down a latch and it's just you. That's the environment that many pimps operate in. They operate in these bunkers or silos. And for the average person that is hard because they've been indoctrinated and groomed to seek validation, permission, comfort, and entertainment. So when they get in an environment where all that's gone, it's very hard for them to operate and perform. And this is why so many people are pimped. And I'm going to give you an experience, a few experiences of what brought me to the pimping side. First of all, my first successful company. My boss didn't want me to do it and I didn't make $250,000. And I understood that there was money going against the grain because if he had found out what I was doing, I would have gotten fired because he told me explicitly not to do it. But at that point, I was out of the permission seeking business. I did not seek permission because when I got to business environments, I was on the mission. You know what my mission was? I am never getting laid off again. So I went into these companies not to give, I went into these companies to take, which is very much pimperish behavior. So when I had got to business environments, I was completely, I was halfway rewired. I was like, you, you, you're telling me not to do it. I can make some money. I'm doing it, player. I'm doing it. So I did it. And then when I got in the storage auction business, I learned very quickly that being the apex predator and being the guy who would bid against anyone was very much in the best interest of my wallet. I did not, I had a few friends, but a lot of people couldn't stand my ass. So I was kind of like the villain. And this is something else. If you ever hear an actor talk about playing the villain, they love it. It's so much fun because there's so much freedom and license in being the villain. And then when I came to YouTube, this is a third lesson because my natural Predis, predis, predisposition is to be a generous person. And this is one of the things that solidified my move to the dark side. 2016, I started giving away a bunch of courses. 
with the erroneous thought that if I gave courses and the people took the courses and they made money, that they would spend more money on my higher end products. <laughs> it didn't happen. And I'm gonna tell you why it happened. First of all, the people who were signed up for my courses, like 95% of them did absolutely nothing with my courses. If they had opened the courses and did the exercises and so they would have made money. Why did these people who got valuable courses did not do anything with these courses? The final pimp lesson for me. Diamond Dave put up a post that I very much agree with. And it was a very good analysis. When you go to the doctor, you can't see the doctor without paying for the doctor. And since you have to pay the doctor, okay, you respect and do what the doctor tells you to do. Uh, after my heart attack, I did not question my cardiologist. I did not question my uh, kidney doctor. Whenever they tell me to do something, I just do it because I respect their position because I have to pay them to see them. I cannot see them. I cannot chat on the phone for free with them. Every time I see my doctors, I have to pay them. So there's an inherent respect. I have literally have people every day, hey man, let's network, let's talk, let's chat, maybe let's go. I ignore these people because until they pay me, until they admit that they have a problem, there ain't nothing I can do for them. And that was my third and final pimping lesson because I gave these courses away, the courses were valuable, but the people did not appreciate the courses because they were free. They didn't have to pay anything for them, so there was no inherent respect. So they were just like, ah, sign up, I don't do them. I didn't lose anything because I didn't pay for them. Case in point, I had a friend, and this is why many of you will not move to the pimping paradigm side, because I had a friend who started a business and she wanted to make her products affordable. She wanted to be everyone's buddy and pal. And I told her that it wasn't going to work. And she went ahead and she started the business and she did it. And about a year in, she comes back to me very sad and despondent and talking about um, how it wasn't going well. And like, I knew it wasn't going well because I told her what would happen if she followed, for, followed up with her plan. And at this point, I had to get pimperish on her. I was like, what do you think? What did you expect, you stupid hoe? That's exactly what I said to her. And she's like, why are you talking to me like that? Bitch, I told you what to do and you went ahead and th this wild ass, wild, wild ass scheme, a was in your head, you did it. And now I actually told you what was gonna happen before it happened if you did this. So I'm not gonna sit here and talk to your monkey ass because you know we're friends and you, you get this knowledge and you don't appreciate it. So I had to slap her around a little bit. I had to put my pimp hand down on her and she was crying and she was shocked that I was speaking to her because I called her a stupid ass hoe. And she was like, she got, you know, she got blustery and she started boohooing and she started crying and all this other stuff. And like, I'm immune to a woman crying. That does not do anything to me. And then, you know, I was like, you can leave now. And she's like, what? It's like, you can leave. What's the point in me telling you what to do when your stupid ass ain't gonna do it? It's just pointless, just wasting my time. So she leaves and I, I don't hear from her. And about three weeks later, she, she texts me and she's like, I wanna talk to you. And I'm like, what do you wanna talk about? Cause if it's about business, um, I ain't talking to you because you don't listen. And she's like, look, how much would you charge me to help me? Going back to Diamond Dave's post, she understood that she had a problem. She was willing to admit that she had a problem. And I was like, it's gonna cost you $10,000. She said, that's all I got. I was like, I don't care. So she pays me the $10,000 and we re resurrect her business in six months. So the lesson of that story is when you give good advice and people don't have to pay for it, will not admit that they have a problem, will not respect the advice. You're just wasting your time. 
So I actually talked to her like she was a street ass hooker. And this chick ended up paying me $10,000. And then she listened, she listened. And that was my third and final lesson in the pimp side. Cause I get people, you know, good Lord, Glenda, your course is a $5,000. Who's got that money? And I look at my Stripe account and it's like this person, this person, this person, this person, this person. See, I'm about to tell you a little secret. And this is something that the average person doesn't understand. Right now, there's someone driving a $3.5 million car on the road. It may be a Bugatti, it may be a rare edition of Ferrari, it may be a rare edition Lamborghini. See, there's the basic market, which is the biggest market. There's the middle market, there's the upper middle market, there's the rich market, and there's the fantastically rich market. And each one of those categories has an audience of people who have money who will spend money on what they want. You could come up with a thousand dollar perfume, no social media following, no one knows who you are, and you just come out with this perfume, you get your packaging correct, and then you start going on social media, you start talking to people. There is someone who will pay you $1,000 for your perfume. I just gave you an ultimate pimp secret. I just gave you some pimp insights, knowledge, and wisdom. Because this is why I don't worry about prices. Now, in my current course, Home Economics, uh, I'm gonna tell you the plan with that. Because once again, I am not afraid to fail. And this is like maybe one of my superpowers. This is why the uh, whole thing in October didn't affect me at all. I mean, honestly, I did not feel any ramifications financially, socially from it. My girlfriend knows about it. She saw it and she's like, these people are crazy. It's like they're taking everything you said out of context. So it didn't really impact me. And, and you know, and I, I got a comment and the comment I put up in the beginning um, was talking about as I've gone through it, after the first time that I got dragged by the internet, I've learned how to handle that. And I'm about to say something that's gonna be very pimperish. If you cannot deal with people talking about you that you don't know, you're not ready to be successful. Because the inherent, just you being successful, like you could be living your life, you can donate to charity, you could be a really good person, but because you are successful, there will be people who will hate you. There will be people who will not like you. There will be people who would drag you, go after you, lie about you, make up stories about you. So if you're, you can't deal with people talking about you, you ain't ready to be successful. If you're gonna lose sleep because someone who's a stranger, someone you don't know, someone who doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of your life is talking about you, you are way too sensitive. You really are too, thin skin to be successful, just to let me know, let you know. So I don't really, failure doesn't bother me. Like I was able to come here on YouTube, spending 400,000 to start a car rental company, and it was a complete and other shit show. I actually exposed and talked to you about how things weren't going well. I made videos every time someone kept a car, every time someone got arrested, every time someone brought car back damage, I would post up in the community post. I would be honest, open, and transparent with you guys about not doing well. Now, once again, I have moved to the pimp side. I have understood that failure is just part of the process. I understand that. And honestly, I'm gonna be straight up. I haven't really failed like that 20 years. I've had what I would call mini failures. Like I would put out a course or something and it would uh, not do well. And then I would learn from those lessons because like there, there's a sequence and procedure to creating online courses. There's things you have to do because like my launch of home economics, which isn't a real, it's only 350. I haven't set up a payment plan. I will set up the payment payment plan for the next phase, but by failing, I've learned how to create online courses. Let me say that again. By failing and learning and taking those failures as paying tuition in the game of business. That's what, you know, 
All right, once again, this car rental business uh, is $400,000. I'm getting all my money back because I'm not going to pay taxes depending on what I make this year because if, um, yeah, it depends upon what I make this year because uh, I could dramatically reduce my taxes this year. I dramatically reduce, I, I'm not paying any federal taxes for last year. I'm getting all that back when I file my taxes. But this year could be a very different animal. I could dramatically reduce my taxes for this year. And then next year I would have to pay my share of federal taxes. Just depends on where we are. But one of the things that I have learned is there are lessons in failure. So I actually seek out failure. I will put out something, I will do something, and I will test it. Like when I did that video, I could have been a predator, uh, R. Kelly energy. That was a test. And honestly, looking at, once again, the dragon on the internet, I didn't even pay attention to that. It wasn't a failure. There are many of you who said that you have come to the channel to subscribe to the channel because of that video. So it wasn't a failure, regardless of what certain people may assume. And this whole notion that I am a sex trafficker, and let's talk about that. Sex trafficking is when you go out and get an innocent girl, get her doped up and force her into a life of prostitution. If you know anything about BDSM, BDSM is rooted in consent. I never did anything to a chick that she didn't want done. So that was just preposterous that it would think that I would be into sex trafficking. Some fat, stupid YouTuber actually put that out there. I'm just like, you really are dumb. You're really dumb. You think that I could do all this for almost 15 years and never run into a legal situation. But I had to be sex trafficking. Once again, just another dumb YouTuber. But once again, um, one of the things that I've come to understand, and this is why, and this is the lessons that you have to embrace if you want to move to the pimp side of the quadrant. Because once again, there's no middle ground. Either you will be pimped or you will be the pimp. There's no middle ground because of the way that we're orientated, indoctrinated, uh, the way that we're set up, the way that we are, um, put together, there's no middle ground. You will respect or be respected. There, there's no middle ground. So one of the things that people have to understand and appreciate in the pimping paradigm is that you have a choice. But part of this is, because let's go back to the example of you being in the middle of the ocean on a ship that is sinking, all right? One of the things that I do since I am part of the pimping paradigm, I have a backup plan for everything. I have an iMac Pro in there to edit videos and I have a iMac, Mac, a MacBook Pro. I literally have a backup to everything. So let's say this camera broke. I have another camera right there that bam, I can just pick it up and start going. So this is one of the things that I've done in my pimpology is everything that I have that is requirement that's necessary for me to make money, there's a backup. And if I was to go on the ship, I would have an insurance policy. I would hire another ship to trail a ship in case it sunk. And if the ship was sinking, I would have a, a backup plan because this is what pimps do. See, the thing is, if you, and this goes back to being 100% accountable, but for yourself, uh, you will have a backup plan. You will have an alternate plan. Because like anything that makes me money, I have backups. I do not just come out here and do stuff and wing it. Because I remember years and years ago, I was part of this Facebook group and there was a girl who actually had a MacBook Pro and it, it broke on her and she couldn't work for two weeks because she was in another country and it took two weeks for them to ship her a new MacBook Pro, new MacBook Pro and she estimated that she lost about $50,000 because she couldn't work. That would never happen to me. I have a backup, like soon I'm getting ready to buy another drone 
to back up my primary drone. And this is a legitimate business expense. So one of the things that pimps do, and once again, um, there's a very interesting true life pimp by the name of Sharp. He's got some videos on soft white underbelly, Sharp. He is a really charismatic, he's very engaging, he's a very interesting character. And Sharp also has another video here on YouTube called Sharp Car. And it was before the interview on site. And he's got the silky press hairdo because Sharp is mixed. And I think his mother was white or his father was white. And I, just hanging out with Sharp would be a good time. You could just tell because he's such an interesting character. And Sharp is a true pimp. And true pimps don't have, like, once again, and I've never mentioned this before, I actually know a few pimps, real pimps. And this is something that you would find to be real interesting. You know that pimps usually have great credit. <laughs> pimps have usually great credit. Uh, I know a pimp who has 20 pieces of real estate that are paid off. He has a high FICO score and he's like probably 75 and he doesn't have any girls working. But once you become a pimp, you're always a pimp. And he just lives off of those 20 rental properties and his investments. It lives a very lavish lifestyle, very lavish lifestyle. And he married one of his main girls, I'm not getting into that. But one of the things that you have to understand, and we're gonna go back to a question that I asked you, you know you're being pimped. What are you going to do about it? See. Like I said, it takes a different level of energy to understand where you are, and it takes a whole different level of energy to actually solve that problem. Because the first thing that I had to do to stop being pimp was become 100% accountable to who I was, where I was, and take ownership. This is why literally everything that's important in my business, I have a backup because I am responsible. There's no one that's gonna come save me if this camera breaks and stop working. I'm just gonna have to get another camera. But the average person doesn't think like that. The average person thinks that someone's gonna come save them, that someone's gonna come deliver them, someone's gonna come help them. That's, that's the average person thinking, and this person is seeking comfort, validation, permission to be liked. You gotta get rid of those four things to get into the pimp quadrant because um, one of my friends who's quite wealthy, he works very hard to have people not know how wealthy he is. He has a car that he drives to meetings. He has a Porsche, he has a BMW. He's got like seven cars, I think. And you know what he drives to business meetings? He's got a Buick. He drives the Buick to business meetings and he, he told me that one of the reasons I drive the Buick is if I happen to run into someone that I will be meeting or they see me driving a car, he says, I don't want them to have it in their head that I can have these cars. And one of the things I have learned from the car rental business is I had a lot of problems because I was renting out these cars to poor people, demo people who saw me driving the Porsche. In their mind, it was like, oh, this is someone I can take advantage of because he has money. Not, oh, wow, he drive a Porsche, what can I learn from him? No, 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 no. They were looking at, what can I get from this individual? And you know, once I began to understand that, I was like, man, I see why he drives that Buick. Because he says, because people don't know how wealthy he is, it enables him to do deals because people will not just jack up the price because they, they know he can afford it. So. You know, there's a lot of things that you have to understand about pimping. Because like, once again, with the October experiment, which basically uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, April will be six months. So far, it's been a success. And a lot of people couldn't deal with it because of those external attributes that I talked about of seeking permission, validation, comfort and to be liked. Um, once again, I don't really care if you like me or not. I really, really don't. There's only literally a handful of people that I really care what they think about me. And most of y'all can kick rocks because in the grand scheme of things, I came in the world, 
with my mother. I didn't come in the world by myself. I came into the world with my mother. I exited my mother. And when I die, if I'm lucky, I will be surrounded by people who love me or I will die alone. This is a reality because you never know when you can die. Like you could die one night at home when you're asleep. You, you, you have no clue to when it's coming. But the plan is to be die, to die in a house full of love. And once again, I said plan. This is why I'm doing the things I'm doing now, because hopefully I'm 55 and hopefully I'll be around another 40 years that make me 95. So once again, understanding the process of moving to the pimping quadrant is quite hard for the average person because of the way that they were socialized, institutionalized, and the way that they were groomed growing up. It's very hard for the average person to move to the dark side. And I feel that's why that when you look at the people who are business owners, the people who are um, managers, the people who are um, owners, the top 10%, these are people who have taken the ownership of responsibility. And one of the things that they have done is they have come to be highly accountable. And this is one of the things I've noticed. Whenever I meet up with my well-to-do friends, no one's ever late because they understand the value of time. They are early or right on time. No one is ever late. I had one uh, meeting with a friend who didn't show up. He didn't call and I called his wife and I said, is John okay? And she said, he's in the hospital. And she said, oh yeah, I meant to call you. I'm sorry, I was just so worried because John told me to call you. That's typically like when one of my friends on that level doesn't show up, I get worried because that meant that something bad happened. They just didn't blow it off or didn't show up because all my friends are responsible. They, they're, when they say they give you a commitment, they will call you, they will check up on you. So once again, the average person isn't predisposed to the pimping quadrant because seeking validation, seeking permission, seeking comfort, seeking entertainment. You got to get rid of that stuff. You got to get rid of that stuff because as I do my research and I learn things and I come to different levels of understanding, let's take TikTok. I personally don't consume a lot of TikTok and this kind of came up in the conversation with other YouTubers. They were looking for me. I'm not on Instagram. I, I am on Instagram, but I really don't do a lot of Instagram stuff. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on Twitter because one of the things I've learned is Focus your power on things that make you money. And Twitter, like my Instagram account doesn't make me any money. So that's one of the reasons I do not focus a lot of time or information or time or attention there. And this is one of the things that pimps are really, really good. Pimps are really good at focusing on income producing activities. Because like my friend that I had to slap around, once I made her respect my advice, going back to Diamond Days, brilliantly post posted talking about you have to pay your dollar you have to pay your doctor because one of the things and this is what and that was my like i said that was my third lesson in the pimping pimpology that if people do not understand do not respect you number one a lot of those people who signed up for the free course didn't respect the content and they didn't have to pay for the content so they didn't respect it they didn't pay they had no skin in the game so it is not a surprise now that I can look at the data and it's like, oh, this is why they didn't open up the course. And this is why I don't give away stuff for free. I've got like some people, I got a, I think I got an audio book for free that some people find. And I'm like, eh, I ain't really worried about that. But I will never, like my current course, Home Economics is 350. There is no payment plan. Um, once again, I've learned. I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. I have learned that to operate on the pimp side, you've got to be kind of ruthless. You have to be ruthless. And at any moment, 
because I got a video on here like why you need to be a motherfucker. At any moment, I can turn on that side of myself. Um, my girlfriend saw that side of me when we were out and someone approached me about that R. Kelly video and that person left our table trembling because I went off on it. You'll see, there's a lot of people who see me do these videos and they think, oh, he's like that. They don't really know me. They really don't know me because I can switch that on in a heartbeat because I have learned that that side is very effective in business. And this is a lesson I learned from Martin, which is someone I talk about in the home economics course. And one of the reasons I don't believe in karma, one of the reasons I don't believe in a lot of stuff, but yeah, you're being pimped. But once again, I'm gonna ask you this question. What are you going to do about it? Because for you to get out of the being pimp situation, you've got to go to full accountability mode. You've got to go to full accountability mode. And how are you going to do that? How are you going to understand, appreciate, and acknowledge that? Because one of the things that I have learned from the moving from the being pimp quadrant to the pimping quadrant is someone got to be the hoe. I ain't going to be the hoe. I'm going to be the pimp. And here's the thing. So many people want to be the hoe. Once you get into business and you understand accountability, productivity, and efficiency, you will see how many people who really want to be the hoe, who want to play the role of the hoe, who want to be a team player, because they don't want to take on full accountability. They want nothing to do with full accountability. They want nothing to do with it or have it or engage in it. So once again, if you want to participate on the pimp side of the quadrant, you're going to have to go full accountability mode. You're going to have to get to the point where you don't care what people think of you. You're really going to have to get there because as long as you're consistently caring about what people you don't know think about you, it is going to hold you back you're not going to be able to unleash to your fullest potential. You're not going to be able to get there. You're not going to be able to be the ultimate person that you can be. And I will be having more conversations about this because once again, doing the full analysis that 80% of Americans only make $35,000 a year, it was eye opening. But once again, when you understand the full analysis of how people have been indoctrinated, how people have been set up, like there's this, you know, the lies. There, there's this one YouTube commercial that literally starts off the 20th wealthiest people in America made their money off one or two stocks, right? It's 100% a lie. I can show you the 50th American, 50 wealthiest Americans all made their money through business. But why is that lie being told? Because once again, Wall Street, the pimp behind that lie is making billions. So they're going to keep telling that lie because so many people will not even challenge that lie because they don't even know that they need to challenge it. They don't even understand that it's a lie. You will be rich. You will be rich if you invest. You will be rich if you invest. It's told. It's whispered in your ear. It's on every billboard. You go to the bank, wealth management. You're consistently told to invest. And you investing $300 a month will not make you wealthy no time soon but millions of people investing $300,000, 300 bucks a month makes Wall Street billions, billions. But once again, people don't know this. So let me know your thoughts and opinions in the well-constructed comments, and I will see you guys in the next one.